Hi, a lot of people asked me about normal map making. I don't know why they do so many mistakes. I will try to make a very simple example high poly to low poly baking. I will make a low poly mesh, I will do a little bit of issues with the mesh and try to fix it so you have an example of practical problem solving. Perfect. It will be a plane. Plane is good enough. It will assume those issues are with the hard surface modeling. Normally, when you make a low poly, you want hard surfaces. It means that if there is a distinct angle between surfaces, like here, you will have a hard corner. Smooth groups are terms from the 3D Studio Max, and I believe Maya uses term soft or hard edge, they exist in 3D Studio Max as well. Blender do it as well. I or just use the, the term normal. For, for purpose of this example, I will do it completely wrong, so it's probably just like most of people do, which means a model will have one smooth group and it will be a one unified UV chunk without any division. I will show you the problems it creates and I will show you how to fix those problems. Eh, good enough. This is our low poly mesh. I will name it as low. I don't, I don't need material on it. Normally you should name everything correctly, so you don't draw under a lot of default 01, default 02 material names. I export it as low FBX. Those meshes already exist because I did it before as a test, so I don't made a complete fool of myself. This is our low poly mesh. I will duplicate it, call it high, apply a standard gray material on it. Yes. I will fix the smooth groups for now. Uh, people use either sculpting or chamfers or mega scans to create a high poly geometry. Uh, what I like to do is to use the good old subdivision surface modeling, which means I will first protect the borders and then use subdivision to smooth the surface. As you can see, use norms subdivision. I can toggle it with a hotkey and it nicely rounds geometry like that i really like this method because it allows me to very quickly preview all of my changes all of my uh, subdivision geometry work i can put one edge loop and check if it actually did anything good or it didn't do anything or it break some other area. Okay, this looks high poly hard surface enough, but I want I want some holes in it. So I will make something like that. That should be enough.
shift and drag smart extrude now oh, smart extrude is is really useful option there is one problem with it it's it's bind the shift and drag and you know what was shift and drag for last probably 15 years duplicating geometry from selected places so if you are someone like me who uses Presence Studio Max for almost two decades it gets extremely extremely frustrating to every time you want to quickly uh, duplicate faces to create new mesh or I don't know modify existing mesh do anything with it instead of duplicating faces you end up smart extruding few faces through the whole model which usually breaks with the studio max which is no which is suboptimal okay it's it's not nice so really uh, autodesk if you let me rebind it to literally another hotkey to i don't know alt and shift control and shift that would be great we we can be friends again our love can be refreshed okay uh, enough of bumper as you can see it, the add loops works on sub d geometry and just add a few more so we have something we could call a high poly example okay that's eh, good enough got those two perfect perfect let's export it as our high poly By the way, I use FBX exporter uh, instead of OPJ because there is uh, one funny option that is really, really important. The tangents and binormals, they are like additional data about normals. Most people uh, don't use them, but they're really, really useful, especially when you do a lot of mirroring or instancing or God helps you try to mirror half, half of the mesh, then tangents and binormal data is really useful. Uh, normally it could go with OBJ and it will be good enough. Okay, we have the high poly exported. I will go now to the Marmoset. I'm using Marmoset 3. It's 3.08. Because it's it's good enough. I don't need my most four. You probably don't need it either. Uh, I will bake normals. Um, ambient occlusion. I will bet a set of maps in Marmoset. You can use another program because the issues I will show you are mesh specific, not program specific. However, I really like Marmoset because fixing all the issues is much faster in it. I've imported high poly mesh, low poly mesh to bake the normals and the maps. I will click the bread icon and by dragging low to low, high to high, checking the bake distance as you can see. This isn't enough to cover the whole of the, the whole geometry of the high poly, so I will increase it. Perfect. It will ask me about a baking path. I won't do it because I still have this part to fix. So I will increase the offset even more. Okay. It asks me where it should save all the maps. This is my low to high baking uh, stream folder. Let's call it uh, Baker Master 2137. This is exceptionally good name I really like it and so should you okay it saved it uh, and now I can find the high poly and I can click preview mesh and this is how you became a 
breadmaster or baker master or name yourself however you want voila and the first thing that we notice because i did the uh, low pod incorrectly as planned from the start is a wrong angle of the holes of the detail that was on the high poly as you can see on high poly they are perpendicular to the surface on low poly they are not uh, why this happens i will use some spine don't don't, don't look at my cat it's my cat not not your cat if you have uh, low poly geometry will be black on my example like that if you have high poly geometry that will be red like that with the detail when you are trying to bake something and without any special or additional work the program will most likely try to average the normals. What it means is that the rays that are cast during baking will be normalized, will be average across the surface. So it will look somewhat like that. Those are the most important areas. This is probably the more like that actually okay so when you have this part you want to bake it perpendicular but it won't happen because the green lines that are rays are at angle so to fix it you want the green rays to be perpendicular to the black surface you want to bake to do this, you can either, if you are using Marmoset, because you value your own time, you can go to the low in the Baker group, paint skew, select black value, which means you will be painting over the original normals. If, if we zoom in, I hope it's recording correctly, you will see that the green lines are at angle and my paint my masterpiece teach you that they should be perpendicular so in marmo z all you have to do is to use the black color to paint over the affected areas like that see already fixed it even rebake it I, I swear, Marmoset doesn't pay me for promotion. I just, I just really like Marmoset. Click done. Let's check it. Nice. It, it, it fixed the issue. At least this one. The other issue. If you select and view normal map, because I used one smooth group and one uv island one the whole thing is mapped as a one uv chunk see this blue color this is wrong this is uh, incorrect because the low poly if we remove the normal map if... see how it right it's it's incorrect it's still one smooth group and normal map tries to give it the normal data from the high because normal map this is this will be mind-blowing a normal map is a map of normals the normals you're banking are normals from the high poly this is the whole process is just that and most people do it and don't even know why uh, what it means is that if your surface, the low poly surface and high poly surface are, are have the same direction, this shouldn't be violet. This should be 
a very specific shade of blue, a kind of baby blue. It's, uh, if I believe, it's 1.7, 1.7255 blue. This kind of blue. This means that the normal is perpendicular is equal to the hard surface normal. Each color deviation, if it's... Where do you edit colors? If for some reason it's darker, or for some reason it's more, more purple, it means that the normal is bent either way, on the x-axis or y-axis. And this is why it's very important to have those areas correct because this is flat surface and it should be baby blue, not purple blue. The only moment you have a not baby blue color are on the corners, like here. You can see that this area is kind of blue, then it goes to the purple. Let me fix that and you will see a difference. I will make... Can I duplicate it? I will make a screenshot so we can compare it later. I will now fix the low poly issues, the average normal issue and the smooth group issue, and you will see the difference. This is our high. This is okay, so we won't need to change it. This is our low. Okay, first thing you want to do to get the correct normal map is to set up smooth groups correctly. I have a hotkey that does uh, clearing of smooth groups and then automatically set the smooth groups by 35 degree angle. In this example, it works. As you can see, the steps are, are clearly visible. This is half of the work. If you remember, this is still uh, one piece of UV. To avoid seams, you know what, no, I, I won't fix it. We will export it and I will show you why you have seams on your bakes. It should cut the questions by, I don't know, 50%. Okay, I've set up the smooth groups. What it will do, it will make the baby blue color on the surface, with, which we want. But it will also introduce a new issue, uh, the seams on the corners, because I didn't synchronize the UV islands, the UV chunks, with smooth groups. Let it export. Okay, let's go back to Marmoset. It, it updated the mesh automatically. As you can see, it looks broken because we changed the smooth groups, but let's rebake it. Quick bake became bake master. Okay, cool. As you can see, it averages the normals, which is nice. It's not perfectly straight, but it worked fine. But see that nasty seam it, it shouldn't look like that this area the, the flat surface is perfect we did this uh, height difference before this is perfect but the seams are unacceptable let's see how the normal map looks like see this i will check it with my screenshot Look at this. You got the baby blue color, which is really nice. You finally got the gradient on the corners. It's also really, really nice. But I don't think I can zoom this. Nope. Uh, this is sharp edge. This can't be left alone because if you, if you make a mesh and deliver it with such seams, you... This will be the last mesh you will be given. You will probably be either fired or 
sent through re-education re to watch probably this video or something. So, we fixed one issue with the angles. I can show you that I, don't, I didn't light. Oh, oh, okay. It didn't fix it because I painted it. Okay, this is great. This is great because I will show you how to fix another issue. Okay, so we still have them uh, at angle. And the seams. So now we will do the low poly, uh, how it should be. So there is no issues whatsoever. This is our low poly. What I need to do first is to split it according to smooth groups. There is a lot of ways to do that. In 3D Studio Max you have a built-in tool in the UV window. In Blender you probably have to, or you can use scripts. Come on, give me the UV window. It's flattened by smooth groups. What it does, it splits the UV area according to the smooth groups edges. So I have three smooth groups on this low poly mesh and I have three UV chunks. Now, what you want to do is to make sure you have padding. Padding is a distance between two separate UV islands. Uh, this distance from the corner of the UV map isn't that important, but it, sh it also should exist. But the distance between uh, your UV chunks should be significant. There are uh, there are no hard rules, but usually it goes like let me type it. So you can, I don't know, screenshot it or whatever. Uh, for 4K maps, padding should be around 16 pixels, which means 8 pixels between... Uh, let's make it a bit... Oh, yeah. 8 pixels between mm, UV islands. Why? Because you have something called mid mapping. It shrinks the UV maps procedurally. It's highly technical and mostly done hardware right now. But if you shrink, uh, usually it shrinks by three, by dividing by three, but let's just, for sake of this example, divide it by two. Uh, if you make 50% uh, of the 4K map, it's 2048. And padding will be 8 pixels. And it's 4 pixels between UV islands. If you shrink that map, like again, This is perfect. If you shrink it, uh, 1K map is 4 pixels between islands and it's 2 pixels between islands. No, if you have 1 pixels, it's really small, but you still, if you make asset for a console or for a very distant object, or if the object is loaded by engine, it will have a shrinked texture as well. For 512, you have two pixels and you have one pixel between UV islands. It's still it's still okay because this one pixel exists. But if you go even smaller, you have one pixel between two islands. But 
you can't really have a half of pixel because uh, this is where uh, filtering comes back. So if you have a black color and white color on texture, if you are using uh, filtering to blend between them, you will get gray color or gray and it will start bleeding on your neighbor UV islands. So it's better to have at least those 16 pixels. If you are really, really sure that it will never be shrunk more than 1K map from your 4K map, you can go with something like 12 or even 8 pixels. It will save you some space. But usually to be safe, uh, or if you are making assets for example, the asset market or you are not sure uh, where the asset will be used it's it's really really safe to use 16 pixels between uv chunks okay enough enough of that we have the padding this is good okay this will solve the issue with the scene on the corner however uh, we still have the issue with the angle distortion to solve. As you can, as I showed you, you can use Marmoset and find a skew offset or skew angle, but not everyone have Marmoset, so we will use a low poly mesh to get rid of it. All you have to do to make the rays that the normals straight on the space is to create loops that will protect them. Why this is important? I will export it and I, I, I actually know it will work because I do it all the time, so I don't need to check right now. Uh, I will ju quickly jump again to Spain and try to e explain it to you. Come on. Okay. Okay, before just, we had this. Now we have something like that. The spaces are separate uh, spaces. They are, of course, they are stitched together. But for the sake of the example, I made the distance uh, before. You had situation like that. All the rays were average and this area was messed up because it wasn't perpendicular. Right now, when we introduce the additional loops, the rays or the normals will look like that. Good, good, good. This will average because it's again at the corner, but this area will be good again. This will again average and this will be good again. Let's let's see if I'm right or not. Come on, where was it? Okay. Uh, it automatically update the mesh, that's why the normal map is broken, the, the whole map set is broken. But okay, let's rebake it and we will see if it works. Yes, yes. As you can see, there is no seam. It looks, as for 90 degree geometry, it looks, looks really good. There is no seam, and you can see the protecting lines and the baked holes are straight. I can show you the normals and it works just as a, our MS Paint masterpiece. They are perpendicular, they are at angle, and those are perpendicular because 
of those lines. Okay, so this, and let's see the normal map. Yes, as you can see, you still have the gradient. That is really nice. But it, you also have the baby blue color, which is also nice. And that would cover at least the most common issues with baking. So thank you very much for your time and I hope your bakes will get much better. T till the next time. Bye-bye.